Hello and welcome to the Beauty Know It All. Today is a much requested vlog because I'm going to come clean about Botox. I should say that I've been having baby Botox, some good Botox, some very bad Botox, for about 10 years now, um, which isn't very long, so that means I didn't start it till I was 43, 44. Whereas girls today have it in their 20s, which seems crazy to me. I know that Botox can have a really bad rap, but that's mainly because like all forms of cosmetic procedures, you only really see bad Botox. You don't really see good Botox. And I know that because I've appeared on this morning with good Botox and bad Botox. And when I've had bad Botox, which is no fault of my own, and you get the sort of Jack Nicholson brow, which looks like that, um, I, I will be, you know, trolled all over Twitter for it. It's very interesting when people ask me, am I a fan of Botox? I always say in the right hands, yes. Like all things, like filler, like lasers, even like facials, it's really not so much the ingredient as the skill of the person applying it because I've had some of the best doctors in the world um, want to inject my face and offer to inject my face and I'm always so wary um, because what I want is, is what I have now, which is, is very subtle, movable Botox. In fact, I even prefer it when it wears off more than this. So I want what is in essence what Hollywood calls the no Botox Botox. So when you interview a celebrity and you say, what are your thoughts on Botox? And they go, oh, I would never have it. Um, because basically what they've done is they've softened their lines and not erased their lines. And I've actually, in all my time, uh, of interviewing celebrities, I only probably interviewed two celebrities who I genuinely 100% believed hadn't had any Botox. And that was um, Sarah Jessica Parker, who I interviewed uh, about a month ago. And you could just tell by the way her face moved and the way she spoke about it that she genuinely had never had any injectables. And the other one was um, Twiggy, who I interviewed uh, literally last week. And she's 67 and she actually said to me, well, she comes on the side of it's toxin. I wouldn't put it anywhere near my face. I've worked in America. Some people look like America. Some people look like freaks over there. I'm going to let my face as it is. And I genuinely believed that they had absolutely no injectables in their face at all. The vast majority of people err on the side of caution when telling you, and they say they don't have Botox uh, because they have what I have, which is mobile Botox. So essentially my eyebrows still move and you can still do this and you've still got lines and Trying to find a really good practitioner to do that is actually quite hard. It's very easy to paralyze a face, to give what I call the Kardashian look, which they're very young girls and their faces don't move at all, really. I mean, they're very sort of elegant and serene and beautiful, but they don't raise their eyebrows and they have absolutely no lines at all. So you, you sort of end up with a serene, expressionless look which I understand why people have it. And I, if you're in the public eye and you've got paparazzi following you left, right and centre, you don't want to be caught out pulling a strange face. Do you remember the fuss when Beyonce performed at the um, Super Bowl halftime ceremony? And if you've ever seen her perform live, she's really emotive and her face is full of expression. And then the paparazzi caught her in really sort of gurning faces. And she's the most beautiful woman in the world. And so you can understand why people don't want to be caught with that. So it's easier to err on the side of caution if you're going to be photographed and to essentially take most of the expression out of your face so you always look very serene. The trouble is if you're an actress or a TV presenter or a vlogger or somebody makes their living moving, it's very hard to get Botox at the right level so that it erases the really deep lines because without Botox, I would have quite deep lines here. I would have no, no lines here. I've never been a frowner, um, but I am a razor which is when you're, you're, that muscle is very strong and I would have very deep lines that I could feel with my fingers. Whereas what this allows me to do is raise my eyebrows a little bit, but when I rest, there are no lines there. Now, one thing that doesn't bother me, and you don't just have Botox here and here, as you can have it all the way around here, is my laughter lines really don't bother me that much. Um, and I, I don't like having too much Botox around here and it, it, you can freeze your face and so that you can't smile and I'm a smiler as you can tell and I've got very expressionful face and I want to keep that I don't want to lose that and I certainly don't want that which is the Jack Nicholson eyebrow where they over inject here and then this still rises which drives me mad so I want my eyebrows to be moving and I want them even in fact actually to move more than that if possible so what to expect when you go and have Botox well uh, 
most people sell Botox as a fixed price, as in you come in and it's £150 per area or per treatment. And really Botox isn't a single treatment because even the most skilled practitioners can't get it right in one treatment. You need to look at how a face moves, you need to learn how strong the muscles are in the face because everybody has different strength muscles in their face like they do in their bodies. So really Botox should be a two-step process. It should be a consultation and an original treatment and then the second treatment should be a top-up if anything goes wrong. I don't mean that you've been overdone, good practitioners always underdo you and then go back in and tweak you. So make sure when you book Botox, if you're tempted, the second treatment is included. Prices, as I say, start from £150 right up to £600 and £700, depending on where you're going and how many places you have done. I think, and I have tested it, Botox does not work from here down. Don't believe anybody that tells you Botox will lift or firm your jaw or do anything to your chin. It doesn't. Essentially what it does is it's a botulinum toxin that has been weakened down, that goes into the muscle and blocks the nerve, uh, the messages that goes from the muscles to the nerves so that you can't move essentially. You think you're moving but it doesn't move. Or if they're very clever you can move a little bit but not too much to cause deep expressive lines. That's what it's trying to get rid of. It will never get rid of fine, what are called static lines, i.e. the lines that are there the whole time when you're not moving. What it does is it gets rid of moving lines, those lines. I quite like those lines, they don't bother me. What I didn't like was the deep etched lines on my forehead. Now, if you think Botox isn't safe, you're entitled to your opinion, but if I tell you that Botox was originally developed back in the 60s to be used in eye squints and to be used in children's legs that had cerebral palsy because they get a contraction, a contraction in the muscle at the back of the leg and Botox was developed to inject into the muscle to relax so that the foot dropped and it's been around, that means it's been around as long as I have, which is a long time, over half a century, which means Botox in the right hands is totally safe. But it is only safe in the hands of a nurse or a doctor. Don't let anybody else ever inject you. Don't say things like, they were a fully trained beauty therapist. Beauty therapists are not licensed to ever inject anything into you, and certainly not Botox, which is a medical grade product. So it should only be injected by somebody who is medically trained, nurses and doctors. And dentists. Now this is the funny thing about finding a practitioner. How do you go about finding a practitioner? Good question. Because I've had good Botox and bad Botox with some of the best people in London. Um, and I actually have a really good friend who's a hairdresser who goes to an e a dentist in the East End and has some of the best Botox I've ever seen. So if you know somebody that's had Botox and you like the way their Botox looks, always go on personal recommendation. It's the best thing to do. Now what to expect? I've filmed myself having Botox, which I'm going to drop in now, with a doctor called Dr. Tapan Patel who runs a really, really reputable clinic in town called Phi, Phi, P-H-I, do you know what? times I've written about it and it's the first time I've said it out loud. I think it's fee, fi, pie. <laughs> That's terrible, isn't it? Anyway, here's me being injected by him. He's the most charming man. He's got a brilliant bedside manner and he's very good at mobile Botox. So first of all, he's looking at my face. He's assessing the movement. He's asking me to move. And only by asking me to move can he pinpoint where the muscle is at its strongest and where it needs injecting. And you'll see in this clip, hardly any injections at all. It's not loads and loads and loads. There's no numbing cream. It's not painful. They use an injection needle that's actually used by diabetics to self-inject for insulin. So it's incredibly shallow and it's incredibly fine. In fact, you can barely feel it. If you're a little bit stressed and you tighten your muscle, you can sometimes feel a slight prick and a slight stinging, but honestly, it's not painful at all. It's a lot less painful than having your teeth cleaned at the dentist. And all in all, the the consultation should probably take 15 minutes and the treatment takes no longer than five minutes. Sometimes you might come up in tiny little bumps at the top, sort of almost like a, a little insect bite bump, but it goes away in, in five or 10 minutes. You might bleed a little, but I wouldn't worry about that. Occasionally you can bruise, especially if you're prone to bruising. So how long should Botox last? Well, it takes two weeks to kick in fully. You go back, you have a top up, you have tweakments, you know, to sort of balance or maybe eyebrows out or to get rid of lines that can suddenly appear here or little rabbit lines. Maybe to top up because you like a look that's stronger than mine. It can be tailor-made to your face and your needs and that's what's so clever about it. So when people say to me, 
how much you should spend on a cream, I always say, well, what do you want a cream for? Because a cream will get rid of surface fine lines and dehydration. But for deep lines here and here, Botox works. It's proven to work. And if you start thinking of investing £250 in a cream, think twice and have Botox instead. If you're open to the idea and you want to get rid of forehead lines and lines here, deep set etched lines in your face because Botox, that's what Botox for, it works brilliantly for that. I also understand if you decide not to have Botox, my friend Edwina, who had it the other day for Red Magazine for the first time, honestly, it was like talking her back off the ledge. She was so concerned with thinking about it all going wrong, she never thought about it going right. And she went to see Tapan Patel, who you've just seen inject my face, and she was really happy because he basically took step by step baby step approaches to giving her the soft, softest of Botox. And that's what a proper practitioner will do. So my advice is, if you think it's for you, find somebody who a friend has been to see who has work that you like. We pretty much, most of us, I would imagine, know someone somewhere in the village or in the town or a friend of a friend who's tried Botox. Only go and see a medical professional, a dentist, a doctor or a nurse, never let anybody else treat you. Make sure that it's the, what you pay for is a two-part treatment. So you've got your assessment, you've got your consultation, you've got your initial treatment and you've got your top-up two weeks later because your top-up is the tweakment. It's, it's the tweaking it to make sure that it's absolutely perfect and that you and your practitioner are happy with it. Wait two weeks before you go for that second appointment because it takes that long to kick in. It really does. And expect to pay from £150 upwards which seems like a lot of money nowadays, but actually you can pay a lot more than that for creams that simply aren't worth it. And don't worry if it starts to wear off after four or five months, that's what it's going to do. You might learn to like it as it wears off like I do. And don't judge anybody if they've had Botox because it's a great treatment and it works. If, however, somebody tells you they haven't had Botox and their face doesn't move, don't believe them. It drives me mad that celebrities lie about the work they've had done. I don't understand why they can't own it. We're not all Sharon Osbourne. We haven't all had masses of work done. But on the other end of the scale, we're not all Sarah Jessica Parker who haven't had any work done. And if you want to see what faces look like without Botox, watch any TV program or film or series filmed prior to 1993, 1994. Look at early episodes of Friends and see what Courtney Cox looked like when her face moved, when she hadn't had Botox. Look at Charlie's Angels, look at Dallas or Dynasty, look at anything that was filmed before the mid to early 90s and you will see real faces. And sometimes it's shocking to see them on TV because we're so used to Botoxed faces, we forget that real faces do move naturally. They do, and a lot more than my face, face moves. So. They're my pros and cons of Botox. If you've got any questions, please ask below. I can only recommend clinicians and practitioners who've injected me and who are brilliant, and I will list them below, I promise. But because they're in central London, they're quite expensive. So I'm asking you to start recommending people below because you are all over the world, and if you've had great Botox and you're happy with it, list them below copy their URL in so that we can start a database. And hopefully, if your doctor or your nurse sees it, they might give you a discount next time, so it's a win-win situation. But basically, I can recommend four or five people in London who I think are good at doing it. And trust me, they are hard to find. Really good Botox practitioners, practitioners are hard to find. So if you can recommend somebody, we can start a sort of little database that will help people. If you decide Botox is for you, and if you decide that Botox isn't for you, Good on you, you're a stronger person than I am. I am the beauty know-it-all with a semi-mobile face. And I hope I've just ex opened the lid, exposed the truth about Botox. Ask me any questions, that's what I'm here for. And thank you for subscribing, because I really do have the most lovely subscribers in the world.